Chris, Coach Mario was just talking about how well the secondary is playing right now. Why? What is it? What, what is so good about the secondary right now? Well, I think it starts with the players that we have. They're talented players. They're playing extremely hard. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Uh, they believe in themselves, believe in what we ask them to do. They believe in the process, uh, our weekly process of preparation to get ready for a game each week. And they keep getting better every time they take the field. Uh, last week, the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practice that we had was probably the best week of practice that we've had since I've been around here. And I think um, the, the results on Saturday keep getting better because of that. Whenever teams uh, seem to try to get horizontal on you guys, whether it's a, a pass or a run to the sideline, it seems like Von Bell is kind of like, like a missile. Shooting up he's a silver bullet. I mean, he's <laughs> he, he's the true. If you were to say what's a silver bullet, look at Von Bell. I mean, when he comes from his safety position downhill, uh, whether it's a run or a pass, I mean, he's coming to, to light somebody up. And uh, he understands angles. He's an aggressive player. He's a great tackler. Um, he's bought into the way we teach tackling. Uh, he works extremely hard at it every day when we're in practice. And what you see on the field is the, on the field each Saturday is a result of what he's done in the last year and a half with the way we tackle. And naturally, he's just an aggressive player. He's got that it factor. I mean, he knows how to get to the ball. Front row right. Yep. Yeah, Chris, a couple things. Number one, uh, like Urban said, he, he's, he finds it hard to imagine any secondary playing better in the country right now than your group. Uh, what do you see about that group in particular that, uh, I don't know, for more of another word, excites you? I mean, what, what's, what are they doing great more than anything else? Well, we, we talk about some of our objectives for uh, each game and every day, really. Uh, one, it's to believe in what we're doing and believe in themselves, and they, they have that. But we want to go out on the field, and we want to challenge everything. And we're doing that right now, both at the corner position, safety position, the linebacker position. We're challenging throws. Uh, we want to produce takeaways, and, and we're doing that um, in the first three games. We've been able to do that as a defense, not just in the secondary, but as a defense. And we're, we want to play physical, and, and you can see in our tackling, we're, we're uh, pretty physical tackling uh, defense, not just a secondary, but a defense. And if we can do those three things consistently each week, we're going to have a chance for success. And right now, I can say in the three games that we've played, we can say check to all of those things. And it's good to, 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 to see that. But like I, you know, I hear all this about our secondary, we're playing well and pass defense and all that. I mean, there's really a, um, a main reason why we're having success, and it's because of our defensive line. You know, it's, it's team defense. It's not about the secondary. It's not about uh, the corners and the safeties, it's, it's about team defense. I mean, for our safeties to have success in coverage, they rely on good reroutes from the outside linebackers. And we have Josh Perry and Darren Lee getting reroutes on number twos, running up the field on those guys and taking some steam off of them. That makes a big difference. When we have a quarterback running around back there scared to, to get hit because Joey Bosa, Sam uh, Hubbard, uh, Dolphus Washington are chasing him, that makes a big difference. So it's a team concept. It's a team defense. And uh, one part won't be successful without the other. And, and uh, the good thing about it, our guys know that, believe in that, and um, they're uh, flourishing because of it. Yeah, another thing, uh, this team is coming in. They've played some pretty good offense you know, a few yeah. games so far. Uh, their Braverman kid, I think, I can't remember his number, the wide receiver, little five. Number eight, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's had over 100 yards receiving the yeah. last three games. What kind of sets a guy like that apart when you watch him on video? Well, I think a lot of it gets back to their scheme. Uh, they put him in positions to get a lot of free access throws. I mean, you know, people aren't challenging him very much because of where he's at. A lot of it's bubble screens off of a play action where they're getting outside linebackers sucked up and getting the ball to him in space. You know, he's got great hands. He's got... Uh, uh, good ability to, to, to run with the ball after he makes the catch and uh, avoids you know uh, contact and, and makes people miss out in space. But you know, I think they do a great job of a, if they have a good, reliable receiver like that, they're getting the ball in his hands fairly quickly and they're doing it without him getting challenged like we want to be able to challenge uh, receivers because of their scheme. Remember, right, Austin? Chris, it seemed like last year it took a few games some time before defensively you guys were playing your best. And it surely helped to have an offense score a lot of points. This year, it almost feels like it's just reversed. Uh, is that a fair assessment to say the defense is leading the way? And is there a measure of pride for that unit to now be doing the opposite and helping out the offense? Well, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what the offense does. If they score 50 points or, or five points, we have a job to do. And it's to go out there and limit points and, and keep the uh, opponent out of the end zone. So uh, our players take a lot of pride in that. And uh, you know, offensively, there's going to be great days. There's going to be bad days. Defensively, there's going to be great uh, games, and there's going to be bad games. But the true measure of a great team is that you can balance each other out, and you can pull through 
uh, tough times when one side of the ball maybe didn't have a great game or the other uh, side of the ball didn't. And the playmakers on the opposite side pulled the team through and, and you get a victory. And uh, you're sitting here undefeated and you get a chance to, to make corrections you know, that you need to get corrected and get things going in the direction you need to get them going. But uh, it's cyclical. Um, you know, there's going to be good games and bad games uh, for both sides of the ball. And again, fortunately, we've got enough talent on each side of the ball that we can overcome those. It happened last year, like you were mentioning, just the opposite. And uh, you know, right now, our, our concern defensively is to go out and do the job that we need to do, and that's to keep the opponent out of the score or out of the end zone and off the scoreboard. Second row middle, Ari. How many prospects do you think, just offhand? I mean, are you responsible for in the grand scheme of your guys' plan, like per, like individually? Uh, I, I guess I, I don't quite understand the question. Like, how many are on your list, and how many? I think at one point might you be like the main guy. You talking about recruiting? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, every player that uh, we're recruiting on defense, we pretty much as a defensive staff are all involved uh, with it. Um, you know, we don't just recruit as individual uh, coaches. We, we try to recruit as a team effort defensively, and uh, we're involved with every recruit that we're trying to recruit. Uh, if you're talking about more just uh, being a, a maybe a lead recruiter for certain individuals, uh, pretty much anybody that's involved in the secondary, Coach Combs and I tag team and, and uh, are lead recruiters for basically all the secondary players. What I was getting at is at Ohio State, your guys' list, I think, for the players who are Ohio State caliber is a lot smaller than at a place like in the MAC where. Yeah, it is a lot smaller, yeah. What do you think the challenges <laughs> might be if that list were way bigger? Well, the, the, the challenge that we have right now from a recruiting standpoint defensively, especially in the secondary, is we're looking for very specific skill sets to do the job that we ask them to do. We're not just looking for, for an example, a big 6'3", uh, 210-pound safety. That doesn't fit the job description of, we want, of what we need our guys to be able to do. So we're looking for guys with coverage ability, good tacklers, uh, football intelligence like Avon Bell. Uh, is right now. I mean, those are the type of players that are looking for. How many of those are out there? Not a whole lot of them. So it shrinks our list even even more. Uh, that's probably the biggest challenge is, is trying to identify guys that can fit uh, our skill set and, and fit the job description that we ask them to do. If you're talking about comparing uh, an Ohio State recruit list to a MAC level recruit list, ours is going to be a lot smaller. We have to make sure we do a, a great job of uh, identifying the guys that can actually play winning uh, high-level football here and not just take guys just because they put their hand up and want to come to Ohio State. we got to take the right guys. Because we all know there are a lot of guys out there probably would say, yes, I want to go to Ohio State if we offer them. And we've got to make sure that we're offering and taking the right players that can uh, compete and win at a high level. What do you think the, the challenges were? You guys have a specific challenge because it's harder to find guys who fit what you need. Yeah. They have a challenge because they've got too many to look at. They just got, they got to, yeah, a lot of, I've been there. I, I, I get the challenge. I mean, you just, at times you just got to find guys. You know, uh, if you're at a program, a lower level program, and you're not winning, you might not be very attractive to recruits, and you just got to find guys to fill a roster. I've been there. I know how, how challenging that is. And to uh, um, get those guys, you got to sort through a lot of people. And it's a lot of film evaluation. It's a lot of follow-up. It's a lot of phone calls, a lot more than what we probably have to do uh, right now here at Ohio State. It's just a completely different uh, recruiting uh, approach because of where you're at. Coach, I'm sure you can't get into specifics about Damon Webb's off the field incident, but from a football standpoint, what does that mean for you guys? How disappointing? How disappointed are you? Because it seemed like he was coming on. Yeah, I, I, I can't uh, make any comments about Damon Webb's situation. A, a statement's been released uh, by the athletic department uh, regarding Damon, but Damon was playing well for us, and uh, you know uh, he'll be missed. But we've got enough people that uh, will fill in and continue to uh, get the production that we need. At the nickelback spot. Who's now the number two nickel? Because I believe Cam Burrows. Well, yeah, uh, at Nickel, Cam Burrows and Marshawn Lattimore uh, are two guys that are working at that position. Cam took most of the reps Saturday, uh, and Marshawn, we're just trying to get him uh, into the flow of playing football because he hasn't played a lot here. And, but those are the two guys right now. Eric Smith, Eric Smith won't be involved in there at all? Uh, uh, right now, today, no. Okay. So Marshawn and Ward, your backup corners now? Or who they are, are. yeah. yeah. Front row, Bill. You mentioned Sam Hubbard before. He's a former lacrosse player, was safety, he knew he was being recruited. Um, Great linebacker, could you explain his development and what, he, what makes him special, what, what, what his role is right now? Well, it's hard to explain his development because it's been off the charts, to be honest with you. I mean, you, you said it already, a, a guy that came here, or didn't come here as a safety, but was a high school safety. Now he's a, what, 260-pound defensive end uh, rushing the quarterback. I mean, that's, that's in a short amount of time. You know, that you're talking about in a, in a year and a half or two years, uh, 
he's been able to develop his body. And what that really does, it, it talks about uh, Coach Mick and what uh, his staff and the strength and conditioning program here at Ohio State is all about. I think they're second to none. Coach Mick does an unbelievable job. But it also speaks volumes about uh, Sam Hubbard's commitment. Um, you know, we laid down a challenge with him. We thought his best position would be defensive end. He wasn't big enough, strong enough to do the job a, a year ago, uh, but he is now. And again, it's his commitment to uh, Coach Mick and his staff's plan of development uh, to get bigger and stronger and uh, our nutrition staff and, and being able to provide him the right uh, food and uh, build his body the way it is right now. So it's really, uh, it's kind of unprecedented to see a guy uh, go from where he was to where he's at in such a short amount of time. But uh, those are the things Coach Mick does. And it's, uh, again, he puts together a great plan, but Sam's followed that plan and uh, it's worked out well. New to the position, what's his ceiling? Uh, it's very high, uh, really high. You see the, him making huge improvements uh, really every day he goes out there. Uh, from week uh, one against Virginia Tech to where he was at here this last Saturday, completely different player. We would, we hope to and expect to see that continued improvement each week as we go forward throughout the season. But Sam's a great, uh, great kid, and uh, he's very committed to being the best that he can be and uh, knows he needs to continue to get stronger uh, to become a better player, and he's working on it all the time. Coach, I know there's a difference between practice and games, but is the offense that you go up against in practice looking better in those workouts than they are on game day right now? Uh, it, it's hard to say that because what we do defensively and what they've faced defensively on Saturdays are completely different. Um, I would say probably from an offensive standpoint, uh, facing uh, our traditional four down defensive line front is uh, probably easier uh, than what they faced in the last three weeks. They've gone against bear zero, uh, and they've gone against what I would consider odd junk defense the last two weeks. That is not easy. Um, it's not easy at all. And they don't go against that every day. And when that all of a sudden pops up in a week, uh, it makes it very difficult to make that transition. Uh, there, our offense is loaded with uh, really good coaches and really good players. Uh, but when they're throwing a, a curveball like they have been uh, the last three weeks, that's a challenge. If somebody came out offensively against us defensively and did something completely different than what we had prepared for, guess what? It's going to be a bad day for the Buckeye defense, too. How easy is that to do? To, to show someone a defense that to, to do what Northern Illinois did, go to an odd front when you hadn't done that before, to do what Virginia Tech did last year, to go to a bare defense when they hadn't shown that before. It's not easy to do. You're really, you're, it's like going to a casino and gambling a little bit. You know, you're hoping it works out. And uh, if it does, then, then uh, you know, hats off to you. Uh, if it doesn't, then it'll be a bad day for you. But when you're facing an offense like ours, they're loaded with a, talent, with a talented group of uh, offensive linemen and skilled players and quarterbacks. A lot of these teams feel like they probably have to do something different. Can you define odd junk? What does the junk part mean? Uh, when I say that, it's just it's blitzing and coming from a lot of different uh, angles, you know, from the field, the boundary, in the middle, um, and uh, just trying to create confusion, confusion and um, make plays, you know, based on that. Yeah, you would, you would consider us probably a, a, a junk defense on third down. You can get more exotic and do some different things to try to create confusion. And we don't do that necessarily on first and second down, but some teams do. And a lot of it is personnel based. You know, if you're, you're facing an, or if you're a defense that's got that type of personnel and that suits your personnel, that's what you do.